Got it. Yeah. Is it me or is it? It's warm up in here, dog. I'm like. You know what I'm saying? It's a little warm. It's a little warm. What's up, Shannon? What's going on? How are you? You got it. Blessed by the back. If I was any better, my name would be Shannon. If I was doing any better. <laughs> All right, we're going to call our meeting to order. It's 6 o'clock. Welcome, everyone, to the Akron Citizens Police Oversight Board for April 17th, 2024. We'll open it up with our roll call of our board members. Aniskevich? Here. Gippen? Here. Peebles? Here. Hawkins? Here. Castle? Here. Costa? Present. Reed? I know the Richards. Here. Um, Reed will be absent tonight and Boyd is here. Right, can I get a motion to approve our minutes? So move. I get a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you so much. They're approved. I will do the reading of our purpose. The overarching mission of the Akron Citizens Police Oversight Board is to foster conditions and police practices that ensure the safety of all residents of the city of Akron. The CPOB is empowered by a new city charter provision to independently direct the police auditor whose office reviews investigations into complaints and misconduct involving officers. The board and auditor also review every standard investigation, whether by Akron Police Department or outside agencies, into the use of deadly force by an officer. Vision. The Citizens Police Oversight Board envisions each of its members to be change makers, bridge builders, diplomats, and servant leaders who together with police, the city of Akron, and the community at large. Our values, our decisions and actions are motivated by our love for Akron, our desire for all to feel safe in the community. We value unity in voice and action. We respect each other, those we serve. We seek to build relationships of trust and we seek to always conduct ourselves with integrity. We listen to understand, learn and lead. We strive to be inclusive of all stakeholders voices we value change at a system level. We hold ourselves accountable for our actions and deeds, and we hold our partners and those we serve to be accountable for, those, for their actions and deeds. At this time, we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, and that's public comment. Ms. Aniskevich? I don't believe there are any. Thank you so much. We'll move on to the next item on our agenda, which is our committee report out. We'll start first with our governance and Mr. Bob Gippen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, committee met a um, week ago Tuesday, um, and uh, of course we had Mr. Fennell with us uh, for the meeting. Um, uh, again, a very good meeting. We had a lot of discussion um, generally about process, um, you know, kind of keyed on the um, the, the uh, procedures uh, that you've now got the, the list of that we're gonna be starting to work through. So there's a, a lot of discussion about that in general, um, general process, which was uh, you know, very useful. And of course, Mr. Fennell brings um, experience other places. Um, you know, so um, that's very useful. And as I understand it, he's optimistic that we may be able to get some templates um, for procedures, which uh, would be great. Might save us a, a good bit of drafting. Um, to get into it, so very, you know, very useful um, general discussion. Um, there was um, also an action item that we talked about at some length, um, and I, I hope the board members, I trust all have this, um, and what it is is a resolution um, on investigations of use of force and use of deadly force. Um, it was circulated, and uh, to get discussion Started, um, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, would move adoption of this resolution. 
Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? If I might, Mr. Chairman. Um, explaining what is, is going on here, and let me, let me say also, uh, uh, Director Matz, um, we, as we've been doing, have you know, shared uh, the, the initial draft of this um, with the Law Department, uh, specifically Mr. Angeloni, but also uh, Ms. Matz, um, you know, and it got a, a great improvement of the initial draft. Um, you know, so I, again, I want to really, really thank the Law Department for um, the cooperation that we, um, we've been getting and, and particularly as, as reflected in the work that was done um, on this resolution. Now, what the reason for the resolution is this. The charter um, provides that generally we, we can, without doing more, we investigate and report on, if appropriate, complaints, okay, um, which we do. Um, but it is that it's silent otherwise, uh, other than to say that by a two-thirds vote, um, we can investigate and report upon it. When I say we, uh, it means the board and the auditor. Um, that, that by a two-thirds vote, um, we may investigate essentially anything else to do with the department. Um, and um, use of force incidents and use of deadly force incidents um, fall within that broad category. Um, it would have been probably better drafting um, if if use of force, use of deadly force incident investigations had been simply treated the same way as complaint investigations. Um, so we just proceed on them. Um, but it wasn't. So the purpose of this resolution um, is to generally authorize, um, might call it a blanket authorization, um, of use of force and use of deadly force incidents. Um, so that it would, it would then fall within the, within the um, provisions of the charter. Um, and the, the, re the reason for doing it this way is that both because of the backlog we have and we're getting, you know, predictably, you know, the, the steady flow of new incident reports, completed investigations by the department, um, to try to separately um, you know, by two-thirds vote, approve every one of those for investigation would be not only cumbersome and unnecessarily so, but would, um, would delay the process. Um, you know, Mr. Fennell wouldn't be able to get started until, you know, there was a meeting and we voted. Um, so this is designed uh, to avoid the, the need of, to do that. Um, but, um, and particularly with the, um, the revisions that the law department suggested, we think it is very faithful to the charter two-thirds requirement. Uh, for better or worse, it's in the charter, and we wanted to stay as faithful to that as we could. Um, so this resolution itself is going to, to require a two-thirds vote to be adopted. Um, thereafter, assuming that it goes into effect, um, any one member at, at any time at a meeting, any one member could move that a matter that's under investigation not be investigated. In other words, withdraw it from the authorization. Um, and if that motion is made by any one member, um, uh, unless two-thirds vote no, um, that investigation ceases. So uh, I don't know that it's likely that would happen, but that's a safeguard. Any one member um, can force an, uh, another vote on any investigation. Um, and likewise, um, this resolution itself um, is going to expire um, on March 1, 2025, which is the, the next time um, new members, uh, you know, th three new members, um, or could be existing members. But anyway, the new terms will start that date. Um, and so um, it will be necessary, assuming the board wants to continue to do things this way, it will be necessary to readopt this resolution. Um, so again, that we think it is very faithful um, to the two-thirds requirement while still giving us um, an efficient way of proceeding with um, use of force, use of deadly force investigations. And I would be happy to answer questions. I have a question. Okay, so I'm assuming when you say any one member, you're talking about a board member. Yes, ma'am. Correct. Okay. 
Um, that's the only question I have right now because I'm not sure if my other question uh, well, if pertains you think of to it, this or not. You need to see it. Yeah. I'm not sure if it pertains to this. It's about the body cam. Uh, no, this doesn't Video have anything. This doesn't That's have what anything. I didn't think it had anything to do with that. But I, I do have a question about that since we have representatives here right. about creating policies first. I just want had a question about that. Uh, Chair Gippen, thanks for uh, taking the lead on drafting this uh, as well as the follow up. Uh, I guess my my only thing I want to kick out to the board is whether or not there there makes sense to. I guess rethink the sunset and the expiration of the resolution as proposed. Um, while I know that the first series of members of, of the board will be, I guess, uh, cycling off of the board as of March 1 of next year, I, I can't help but feel maybe that, you know, that might be an uh, artificial fear or artificial barrier that we, we could be making. Um, I guess in, in, in essence, we would just have to reauthorize this resolution moving forward. But if the fear is that new board members aren't going to be bound by acts of prior board members, I think that there's still going to be enough members on the board to where we could achieve a proportional two-thirds majority. And so I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of sunsetting this until, until next year. I think it, it potentially, potentially just kind of hampers while we're in limbo. In, in getting additional board members, I mean, is the thinking that you know this would this would expire, and then at the immediate next meeting we could pass another resolution? Yes. Well, if that's the case, then you know, I, I guess why right. why sunset it, Mr. Chairman? Uh, it, it's a good question. Uh, this this language this language came from the law department, um, and I you know Ms. Matz can speak for for herself if she wants to speak to it. But, um, you know, I thought the law department made, made a very good point um, that um, this, I don't want to say stretches, but, 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 but this, this, this um, acts upon that two-thirds requirement um, in a fairly aggressive way. Um, you know, the more direct reading of the two-thirds requirement would be um, case by case. You know, cases could be brought in group resolutions, but case by case. You know, so the whole idea of doing this in this way as a blanket resolution is, 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 is pushing. Um, and it seemed to me that the law department was quite correct that the inclusion of that language is a kind of fail-safe um, where we would have to come back you know, the, 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 next, the next group, whatever it consists of, would have to come back and readopt this, um, is a prudent thing to do. Um, and again, keeps, keeps faith best with um, the intention of the two-thirds requirement. And in practice, I think, it'll, I think it, won't, it will do little, if any, harm. I would be very surprised um, if the next, the next board doesn't readopt this resolution, but that was the thinking. That again, Palm of Palm, I didn't include it. It was not in the original draft, as you know. Uh, you know, this was law department language, and likewise, it was law department language about any one member asking for um, reconsideration, if you like, of an investigation. I think it's just prudent, and I think it's it, it keeps us as consistent as possible with that requirement. Um, I think the law department's caution on that uh, is conceivably could be challenged. I think was was good advice, and I think it's better to take the advice than not. What's the, what's the justification of having it um, expire, which would be now less than a year from now? Um, uh, for something of, of this magnitude, it seemed like the expiration date would be longer. Uh, the reason um, is that it's it's keyed to the terms of the of the. The three, the three new board members. In other words, three terms, I think, including yours and mine, right? Mm -hmm. three, three terms are expiring. We had two-year terms. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to say Ms. Reed, I forget. But um, so there will either, will, either will be reappointed um, or there will be three new board members or some, some combination. But the idea was that that's, in effect, the, 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 the term of a new board, if you like. It's like... City council, you know, you have a new city council every four years. Uh, so we have a new board, if you like, every two years. So it's keyed to the fact 
that, that it will be a new board, new, new terms on March 1, 2025. Okay, but it wouldn't be a brand new board of, all, of nine members, though. Correct. Just a couple but, people. Again, remembering that this, this takes a two-thirds vote, if the mm -hmm. three new members didn't like it, I wouldn't be just, it would be not enough to stop it, but okay. it, that's the reason. It's, the, it's key to the term, the, the new terms. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or discussions um, before we vote? Very good. All right, we'll roll call vote. Aniskevich? I'm gonna abstain for now because I haven't had a chance to read it because my laptop. Broke down. Can, can, so, can, could we table it so Miss and yep. we can move on to other business? She Absolutely. can read it on mine. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. I, I moved to take, well, we can, it's not you, really, what, can we just come back to, to my, yeah. my report yep. later? And I have no other report. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gippen. Thank you. Um, next, we'll go to Miss Richards and HR. I have no report. Thanks so much, Miss Richards. We'll go next to um, our community engagement, Ms. Casa. All right, so uh, everyone, just a quick update. Our community engagement subcommittee will be uh, meeting next Wednesday uh, from 5.30 to 6.30 at 660 West Exchange Street. Uh, this is the location that we had our uh, offsite board meeting. I forget the exact date, what it was, but when city council chambers weren't available. Um, it is the uh, next to the five points uh, post office directly on West Market Street. And so uh, it'll, it'll be a brief meeting, uh, only, only an hour in duration, but really uh, what, what I'd like to get accomplished is for us to, in essence, uh, provide a, an update to community members who attend, but also for us to start kicking off a series of discussions as to what community engagement uh, really looks like for this board. Um, Auditor Fennell sent out everybody a really interesting article that, that I think highlighted the aspect. Uh, and while the, off, while, while the article specifically focused on uh, internal survey tool and resource that other uh, police departments have used across the country, I think one of the, the good things that the article did was it really underscored the fact that all police oversight efforts across the country really look different. And uh, aligned with that, community engagement tactics and strategies look different as well too. So I, I think the real, the, the real purpose and, and, and the goal and the hope uh, as, as we reactivate our committees to figure out what community engagement activities are, are, are really gonna be best fits for, 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 for our board. Um, what are the community partners that we need to be supporting? Is there any programming that we need to be trying to do ourselves? Uh, what, what resources are out there that we need to be promoting? Um, and at the end of the day, there's, no, there's gonna be no substitute for just getting out in the community and meeting with folks. But that's the purpose and, and the goal of the meeting. Um, based upon the conversation, we'll, we'll follow up there accordingly. Um, I envision that maybe it may, may make sense to kind of break out the meetings into a series of topics that we, we kind of come around um, to meet on on an ongoing basis following that meeting. But, but I think we'll have to first kind of come together, see where we're at. Uh, but also get get a pulse of the folks who attend the meeting. You know, kind of hear what what people are feeling, what people are thinking. Um, at the end of the day, we're the police oversight board uh, that's that represents citizens. But I think we need to kind of take our cues from citizens and what we're hearing from them. So uh, that's that's a bit of an update uh, as well too. We've got, and this has been on hold for a while, but also another a real, another really cool idea that Anthony had is uh, for for a while we've had the Center of Marketing Research contract, ex, uh, not executed, but uh, revised by the law department in a form that was gonna be acceptable. Um, that's been shared with Anthony for him to provide some feedback with respect to uh, his thoughts as to how we calibrate that survey. But I also wanted that survey to be a topic of discussion at our community engagement committee meeting uh, for us to get some feedback as to, you know, are we really, are we, are we looking at the right things? Are we asking the right questions? Is this the best approach? Uh, and this is, gonna, is this gonna be the best strategy to garner feedback that's gonna be helpful for our work? So uh, that's uh, the update I've got. If you got any questions, uh, please let me know. Any questions or comments for Mr. Costa? Do we have anything in mind for an upcoming uh, community engagement event? Anything? Oh, I've got a lot of ideas. Um, at our governance meeting, I think, 
I think one of the, the biggest things and opportunities that we haven't necessarily utilized is the opportunity to educate the community. And that's not only educate the community with respect to the things that occur within the Akron Police Department, but that occurs within the landscape of police oversight across the state of Ohio. Um, one of the things we got really excited about at our last governance meeting was the, the possibility of us having a collaboration meeting or some type of event with the other police oversight boards uh, in the state of Ohio. And so we kind of went back and forth and said, okay, does it make sense for us to first kind of look at doing a community education style event, um, whether that be based on a forum approach or do we want to kind of focus our efforts on bringing together these bodies um, in a way that has a engagement component kind of linked to it. So that's kind of where my thoughts are. I think that us being in the space of educating and bringing along the community needs to be kind of top of the mind as opposed to rather like an event per se, it's just a thing to do. Um, but those are kind of my thoughts on where, where I'm at and what I'm trying to wrestle through. And again, uh, I think it's gonna be helpful to get feedback uh, as we do meet as a committee to kind of figure out, get other perspectives. I think the biggest, and I'll end on this, um, as we grapple with police leadership across the city, I think the biggest thing that's been super clear to me with having uh, Anthony Fennell here is that it's incredible, incredibly helpful having other perspectives and outside perspectives especially. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm, I'm no expert at this, I don't think any of yeah. us are with the exception right. of Anthony. So, um, more to come there as we learn more. Okay, thank you. That was a very thorough ex explanation, thank you. Any other comments or questions for Ms. Costa? All right. Thank you, Mr. Costa, for your report. I really appreciate it. Sure um, if it, it doesn't have to be one, but I want to, because it's on the agenda, anything for finance. If it's not, we'll move on. I've got no updates there as well either. Awesome. Uh, our budget passed. Thank we've you. Got, we've got money. Praise him. <laughs> All right. Next, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Fennell with our review committee report out. Mr. Fennell. Yes, <clears throat> thank you. Um, as I pull this up. Um, we met today, <clears throat> earlier today, and um, I do have a, I did finalize a report that uh, the committee um, voted to, to move forward for submission. I've sent that to each of uh, the board members. Um, it is a report re involving that involved a young lady who was, uh, I think a video has circulated uh, through the media where she was uh, body slammed by a police officer. So I examined that uh, incident. And uh, in short, I did not concur with the uh, assessment and review of, of uh, the APD Internal Affairs Unit. I have since forwarded my completed report to uh, uh, Chief Harding and to uh, members of, of, of the mayor's office and law department, as well as to uh, the board members here. Uh, on tomorrow, that report will be uh, placed on our website. There'll be a redacted version placed on the website for public uh, viewing. And uh, I also submitted recommendations that uh, we'd like to present to the to board now. Uh, but I did send a, a, and I will be sending a memo of those re recommendations to the city council and to uh, the mayor's office as well on tomorrow. Um, let me go through that real quick. So as, as part of the, I had four recommendations. Um, the first recommendation is that the uh, CPOB request that the uh, police department, APD, change the disposition of Officer Shoemaker's use of force under case number 24-00003974 from objectively reasonable to not objectively reasonable and take appropriate disciplinary action as warranted by such a disposition. The uh, second recommendation is that C the CPOB also requests that APD initiate an internal affairs investigation into Officer Thomas Shoemaker and Sergeant Timothy Schmeigel for the following. And under Thomas Shoemaker, it is, I have five uh, areas of concern. Uh, 
first is uh, under uh, Directive P-2020-011, uh, Domestic Violence Procedure Section 1. Uh, the second is uh, under de-escalation, under the same um, uh, matter. And then um, failure to document or report a reportable use of force and the use uh, where I just, and it's just titled objectively reasonable force to, to look into that matter. And then also custody, detention, and arrest. And under Sergeant uh, Timothy Schmagel, it is de-escalation, failure to document and report a reportable use of force, and also duty to intercede. So that is my report. <clears throat> you might have any questions or comments for Mr. Fennell at this time? Mr. Chairman, if I might, uh, to, I, I think that um, a resolution um, of the board would also be appropriate. Um, you know, so to, I'd, I'd like to make, uh, I move that um, you, Mr. Chair, uh, 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 join in the communication to the mayor and council as provided in the charter with um, Auditor Fennell um, supporting the recommendations that have been made. Um, well, I'll make that motion. I have some more to say, but I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just have to say, uh, I mean, I, and I've had the privilege of, of course, working closely on this, um, you know, before today and, and then this afternoon. And I, um, it's hard for me to understate how impressed I am um, with, with the, the work that was done here and on relatively short order. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a marvelous report to my eye, um, very comprehensive, and I think just bears out um, what Mr. Fennell brings to the city um, with this experience, so I just terrifically impressed and and strongly support um, you know the findings and recommendations that uh, that he made. Right, thank you. We ready for a roll call vote? Aniskevich? Yes. Gippen? Yes. Peoples? Yes. Hawkins? Yes. Castle? Yes. Costa? Yes. Richards? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Reports out as unanimous. I can't wait. To this resolution. Right. All right. Any further discussion? Um, Janice Kevich? Actually, it's hard for me. I, I do, but I, I'm not going to because I don't have it in front of me. Okay. So, you know, my no, computer doesn't. have it here. No worries. And I don't want to take up time reading it now. I'm, I'm a slow reader because I read as an investigator and not as just reading. Just Understand. Just reading. So I, um, I'm just going to hold my questions for now. But thank you, Mr. Fennell. Uh, that's a very thorough report. Um, I'm looking forward to reading what you sent all of us, and I'm looking forward to us getting to work on it, getting to work on it. Um, is it appropriate now, since he gave that, and there was a video for me to bring up what I had, my question about the video? I, I think he's, I think, Ms. Fender, do you still have something? Because I, I want to, I just want to briefly uh, let the board know, the, the members at the review committee, this afternoon are aware of this, but I uh, came across um, a document that a uh, uh, former uh, police auditor had prepared, uh, Phil Young had prepared, and it was, I believe, an annual report. And in that annual report, it listed several recommendations uh, at the end of the report. And some of those recommendations, uh, it was noted that they had been implemented by APD and other recommendations they were either not implemented at the time of the report writing or there was no indication one way or the other. So I plan to reach out to, uh, to uh, Chief Harding to determine the status of those remaining uh, Excuse me. Uh, recommendations and then I'll report back. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fennell. Really appreciate that. If I, Mr. Fennell, I believe there was a document we saw. Did, has that been shared out to the board? The, uh, the, there were a couple documents. Which document? the, the, the one, one you showed the us the data. The, what you're talking yeah. about, the, where you're going to be seeking the status on these. No, that has not been shared with the board. I can I can share that. Oh, if you wouldn't mind, yeah. it was a, a, again a very excellent document. I think the mm -hmm. board members would benefit by uh, by um, having it and reading it. Okay, I'll I'll share that. So, for my clarity and understanding, is this what would have been a, a draft 2023 report out? 
for, from the auditor's office that had just never been concluded based upon circumstances that took place last year with our auditor or? No, this report was dated for 2022. Okay. So I have a question, which I would believe would be under the umbrella of this as far as body cam video and that type of thing. We had gotten an email, I believe last week or the week before last, um, generated by the mayor's office regarding um, our review of body cam video and that there has not, because I, I'm assuming because we're a new board, there has not been a policy established, is that correct? There has not been a policy established that for for us how and when and, and how and why we would review body cam video. Can somebody elaborate on that? And I know that there's representatives here. Mr. Fennell, I, I know we talked about, do you want to speak to this a little bit? Uh, yes, uh, last week uh, we had a, a meeting with several interested parties from the law department, from the police department, from the mayor's office, and of course, uh, Mr. Kemp, was there and I was there. Uh, one of the discussions uh, in that meeting had to do with uh, providing access to the body worn video for, for members of, of this body. And right now we're waiting for a response back from, from law on what that would look like and how we can share uh, that, that video um, because it has to be it still has to be redacted in, in a way because we are not LEADS certified and, and we don't have the, those levels of access or clearance. So uh, we're trying to figure out how we can do that and then uh, create an environment where, as I do these reports, you also get the video attached to it and can look at the video and go to the places in the video that I mark in the report where I see certain, certain uh, incidents or certain certain things and also where you can look at the video and pull questions from from that mm -hmm. so I guess my question then is um, how quickly would this move forward because you know we, we we've experienced things moving rather slowly sometimes even at a snail's pace um, with the city with matters new matters that have to come up that have to be approved upon and things like that and I'm just wondering, as we continue to get issues come up that you definitely are going to have to investigate, you know, um, how, how quickly is the law department planning to move on these types of matters and, and the city, uh, the administration planning to move on these matters as far as creating policy that uh, gives us privy to, to what we need to see, to what we need to review. I guess that's, that's a question for maybe the people sitting behind us. Um, you know, because if we have a matter that's serious and a complaint that is now on our desk, or on your desk rather, and then once it comes to you and, and like you report, so eloquently reported tonight, something that we need to look at, if we're stymied by the fact that we can't see everything because there's been no policy yet uh, generated for us to, to view body cam video, video and how we're going to view it, where does that leave us if we have to look at something that you yeah. refer to, to yeah. us? Yeah, I believe in, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Fennell, um, I, don't, I don't think that the law department or the city has an issue with sending us a link to review it. Mm -hmm. The one thing that we want to make sure that we're doing as a board is, is that we're not having sidebar conversations with one another about the video. We want to direct as much as we can to Mr. Fennell as far as our questions. We're directing them back to him because he becomes our mouthpiece mm -hmm. um, to the chief of police as well as even to the law department. So I don't think it's a problem. They're going to send us a link that we can review it. Um, I think that the one thing that I took from our meeting that I really, really appreciated is, first of all, the way that Mr. Fennell conducted and handled himself, right? Because from this perspective, he's the expert in the room. And from a city perspective, even from a law perspective, even from an APD perspective, I felt like they were trying to find information out from him was, how, how is it best that we do this? Okay. But it was never a complication of them sending us the video. 
what we want to make sure that we do is that we do it in a way to where it empowers him. And as a board, we can get kind of out of the weeds a little bit because we can now right. versus how we've had to conduct ourselves before. Exactly. So I, I don't think it's going to be an issue with them giving us a link to view the video. I, I don't think that's going to be a problem okay. at all. And I, I think that was brought up in discussion. And from my understanding, Ms. Fennell, you can, you can talk to this too. And I know in my conversations with Ms. Pitts, um, that is the exact thing that they don't want to happen is this kind of blockage or barrier okay, that's, from us that's, doing that's it. That's my so, concern. Yeah, that's, so, that's just my concern. No, no, it was, a really, it was a really productive meeting. I think, I know when I left, I felt encouraged because as a board, we don't have to be where we, where we, we don't have to exist where we used to exist because we have Mr. Fennell. And so I think he's speaking to a lot of that, but those things are gonna be directed to him, even for us. So we would watch that link, and now we're gonna ask him questions. And we're gonna say, hey, can you take this as you review it? Hey, these are questions that, I, that Donzella has. And then we'll conduct and we'll talk about that and we'll go from there. But um, yeah, Ms. Santa Schedule, I don't see us having a, a barrier. Okay, yeah. that, that was my concern. And I agree, and thank you for that explanation about the meeting and, and how everything went, because that when I read that, that was my very first impression was, oh my goodness, now we're gonna have another delay, 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 delays dealing with the city, and it yeah. sounds like the meeting was productive, and you're not gonna allow that to happen. Well, no, ma'am, yeah. we, we uh, I mean, before we left the meeting, we had all agreed, agreed that our next meeting may not involve everyone that was in the room, but we will make sure we have the correct people in the room and we'll have ongoing meetings as we develop not only that policy, but other policies. We did leave out with a general overall policy for the board that as we look at, as I look at cases as incidents happen, and I think I sent this out with respect to the most recent officer involved shooting, as you look at the video, any questions, any concerns, send those to me because I'm building, a f I've got a file now I'm building so that once we get everything, we can then address those questions. And even if it takes a year and some members aren't on the board, those questions are still gonna be out there and will be addressed. So we're working on policy that way. And then with respect, again, like, like uh, Mr. Boyd said, with respect to the uh, access to the videos, Currently, the access is, is internal, and we're, uh, they want to look at how we can make those links accessible to people externally from, mm -hmm. from the city. Uh, and then also secure, there's a security issue involved. So we just want to make sure that everything is done right and, and appropriately, not just for this body, but for going forward that we set the policy the future. Uh, for the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Mr. Gibbs. And Mr. Chairman, just, just, just to add to that, um, it's contemplated that the procedure, um, the procedures that, that, that fall into that topic concerning incident review, um, it's those procedures that we're gonna really have started working on. That's where this will all be laid out, you know, so we'll all know it, the public will all know it. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Gibbon. Thank you, Mr. Fennell, and thank you so much, um, Ms. Santa Schedule, with your question. Appreciate it. Sure. Um, any other comp? We're, I think Gibbon? we're ready to reconvene governance. Oh, <laughs> sorry, go ahead, Mr. Gibbon. I, I think the, uh, the matter, the item that was on the table was my motion to approve the um, use. And we got a second, correct? Yeah, it was, just, it was in discussion, but yeah, we, we needed time. But I think it's ready for action now. Everybody, re are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll roll call vote. You have a question? We'll roll call vote here. Aniskevich? Yes. Gibbon? Yes. Peebles? Yes. Hawkins? Uh, yes. Castle? Yes. Casa? Yes. Richards? Yes. Boyd? Yes. Resolution passes. Thank you, Mr. Gibbon, bringing that back up. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gibbon. Yep. All right. At this time, I want to ask um, Chief of Strategy, Ms. Pitt. She um, had a comment. We just. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman and uh, members of the board. I wanted to raise your awareness and offer a reminder of the two police chief town halls that are coming up. Would invite your and the public's attendance at those. Uh, this Saturday on August, the, uh, August, 
April the 20th from 10 to 11.30 a.m. at Bookdale CLC. And then on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday evening, that's the 23rd of April from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And that venue has changed in response to some feedback that we received. And so it will be held at East CLC on the opposite side of town to try to maximize residents' uh, ability to attend those. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. Ms. Pitt, um, are we still, are the finalists still two? Two finalists? There was a press release released today okay. to share that the mayor uh, is announced one finalist, Deputy Chief Brian Harding, okay. will be the finalist who will, uh, the, the community will have an opportunity to engage and ask questions at those two town halls. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. I already know him pretty well. All right. Any other? Discussions, comments, or questions? Anybody? I'm have to read this after he fixes my mind. Appreciate you, uh, all the work that you're doing, Auditor Fennell. Uh, it's been a real breath of fresh air having you here on the board. And uh, I think even early on, it's we're, we're noticing big differences in terms of our ability to get stuff done. So thank you. Yes, thank you. All right, I, I wanna just extend, um, as always, my gratitude to the entire board. We know that, man, this has been um, heavy lift, but thank you all for just staying in this. Um, I know that our city appreciates it as far as the community at large. I'm really excited about what we've been able to achieve just simply tonight. Um, the report for Mr. Fresnel, really well done, really well executed, we really appreciate it. Um, even going back to even our review committee um, this afternoon was really well done. Uh, was able to get a lot of work done. Thank you also, Mr. Gippen, he was, he was there as well. And just the communication that is happening. And um, always wanna thank Shannon. Um, Shannon, for all your hard work and how you're making sure everything is running and connected really well together. Yes. I, I just wanted to announce we will have an HR subcommittee meeting um, next Wednesday at 6.30, and we'll be discussing the deputy uh, Auditor mm -hmm. position awesome. there. So just a public announcement for that. And then of course we'll do the notice. Yep. Um, All right. Yeah, you're gonna let us know where and what time and everything. Okay. All right. So again, many, many thanks and appreciation. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? So move. A second? Second. Did you? Oh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right, everybody. God bless you. Have a safe journey home.